She joins me now live, Megan Iden, Lori Vallow's first cousin. Megan, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the show. I, I really appreciate this. And may I just say, I am so sorry about what's happened to your family and especially what you're all having to cope with knowing that Lori is accused of these horrendous crimes. What have the last three years been like for you? Um, I really have tried for the most part to stay out of, um, you know, listening to all of the media coverage. A lot of it has been speculation, of course. And so it's pretty difficult to, you know, to hear everybody trying to talk about what they think happened and not really know. So until the trial started, I really stayed for the most part out of it. And I think most of my immediate family has done the same as well. So, Megan, there's been a lot of reporting, as you know, um, affidavits came out, preliminary hearings um, were revealed, you know, lots of awful information has been revealed. And yet, in the last two weeks of trial, we've been getting even more, sort of a parade of horribles, right? And I can only imagine what that's been for you. Have you been following this? Have you been trying to digest and, you know, just process some of the terrible stuff that you're hearing um, in the courtroom? Um, I really didn't pay attention to um, what was going on in the courtroom until the actual trial started. Um, I was contacted by the mitigation specialist um, a few weeks before the trial, actually a couple months ago, and spoke with her at length. And I didn't really get involved in listening to any of the preliminary hearings or any of the preliminary evidence that was offered. Um, for me, I, you know, I followed the case uh, just briefly when, you know, shortly after Charles was killed. And um, for myself, for my own mental health, I really had to just come to terms with the fact that I, I was not optimistic about the children being found alive and had to sort of process through that grief myself. And then once they were actually found, um, you know, I, I completely turned everything off um, from that time until just a couple of weeks before the trial. Had you ever met JJ and Ty Lee? Um, the last time that I saw Ty Lee, she was probably at three years old and I was never able to meet JJ. So what I have followed since the beginning of this story was that Lori's mother and her sister have really been the only ones who've talked much. The, the other brothers, you know, the rest of the family haven't said much, but in the beginning, they were very supportive of Lori. And bit by bit, this damning information um, was revealed. And it seemed to me that they really turned. Do I have that right? Did, did, was there a palpable change in what the family believed um, in terms of Lori's guilt or innocence? It's hard for me to say. I don't really have a lot of contact with that part of the family. Um, all I can tell you is that for sure there was a rip in the family when Charles was killed. There was part of the family that believed that that um, Alex acted in self-defense and there was part of the family that believed that he did not. And that definitely was a separation in our family. And I think that sort of continues somewhat today. My um, most, the thing that I wrestle with the most is that if her immediate family had been willing to hold her accountable and hold Alex accountable at that time that the kids might still be alive. And I know that Adam did try really hard to advocate for Charles and, and to try and get his story out there and to the, to the police, to law enforcement. And um, the family really ripped him apart for that because they wanted to protect Alex and Lori from consequences. And I think that's the crux of where all of this comes down to is that Nobody wanted to hold Lori and Alex accountable. They wanted to, the family system wanted to keep it quiet and wanted to try and, um, you know, explain it away and, and, and just make sure that they didn't have any consequences. And that's well, really my guess is that I, I, of this family I was going to say, my guess would be that they could never imagine that that could happen, that the children could be murdered, dismembered and buried, or that Chad's wife could be suffocated, um, asphyxiated, and be murdered as well. Maybe, maybe that was why nobody imagined that there was a need for any kind of intervention. I, I mean, I can't get in their heads. Thank you for watching.
Go to newsnationnow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.